Hey everybody, my name is Mike and welcome back to the short of it. Quick short videos that give you a high level overview of content, providing you with enough to get started. In today's video, we'll be creating a custom made football jersey. So let's get started. One of the challenges I ran into when prepping for this project was finding the right type of jersey and a size that fits. I'll leave a few sites in the description below that you can use to shop around. The jersey I'll be using for today's video I got from Joe's USA. To create our football jersey, I'll be using Caesar Easy Weed Heat Transfer Vinyl. While it is possible to use sublimation for this project, since the jersey we'll be using is 100% polyester, vinyl is going to give us a better result. With the majority of this jersey being mesh, vinyl will have a better look by sitting on top of the fabric. Sublimation could cause your design to get lost when embedded in this type of material. Lastly, we will need prepping pillows to complete this project. This is a product I mentioned in one of my previous videos. Since we are using a heat press to secure the vinyl onto the mesh, we will need a barrier to keep our design from sealing the front and back of our jersey together. You may also use protective paper, but I'll be using a pillow for today's demonstration. To start, we'll need a name and number. In my last video, I featured defonts.com, an online repository of unique fonts. I went ahead and downloaded the Jackport College font for the player's number and the College Block font for the player's name. I'll be sure to include these fonts in the description. Please check out my third party font video if you have any questions about utilizing this online repository. Just be sure to read the comments of the author for any fonts that you use to ensure that all permissions are met. Now unfortunately fonts can't be edited in Cricut Design Space, therefore we will need a workaround. For today's project, I'll be using Microsoft Notepad, an application that comes free on PCs. You can also use Microsoft Word or GIMP for this step. If you would like for me to showcase these other options in a future video, let me know in the comments. After your desired font has been downloaded, you'll open up Notepad, click on Format, and select Font. From there, a window will pop up giving you the option to select your font. The font design you downloaded from the font should be listed. I would suggest using a larger font size to ensure that quality isn't lost when uploading to Cricut Design Space. After you have typed out your number, we will need to open the Snippet tool. This is another free application that comes already downloaded on your computer. When the application box appears, click New. The screen will lighten. At this point, you will take the cursor and highlight your number. The application will then provide you with a preview of your selection. You will want to save your image by clicking the floppy disk icon. I'll save mine to my desktop. You will then repeat these steps for the player's name. I chose a single layer font for my player's name. Therefore, I'll be able to type it into Cricut Design Space directly rather than using this workaround. We are now ready to continue to Cricut Design Space to bring our design together. We will click on New Project in the upper right hand corner. You will then click Upload on the left hand side. After you select your snipping image, the program will ask you to select an image type. I always default to complex. On the next screen, you'll be given the option to remove any sections of your design you would like to leave out. At this point, we will not only need to remove the background, but also decide on how we want our number to look. If you would want your number to be three different colors and utilize every outline, then no other edits are needed. I, however, want my number to only have one outline, so I will remove the outside layer. I will then select Apply and Continue. On the next screen, you will want to select Cut Image as your upload type. You will then click Upload. You will need to repeat these steps at least one more time to get the outline effect you want. You will again click Upload and select the same design. You will then select the same image type and return to the Remover screen. Now, since I am using one outline, I will remove everything except for the number. Once this is complete, I will select Apply and Continue. On the next screen, you will want to select Cut Image as your upload type. You will then click Upload. If your player's name has the same outline as their number, you will want to repeat these steps for their name as well. Once all of the outlines and numbers have been separated out, we can now add them to the canvas for sizing. Click on each layer and select Add to Canvas in the lower right hand corner. From there, you will want to organize your images by assigning each one to a color. Select your image on the right hand side and then click on the material color option under the operations section in the top left hand corner. You'll be able to pick the color you intend on using for that portion of the design. Once all the colors have been assigned, you can place your number or name back together to ensure it looks the way you want it to. 
You can then select all of the images on the right hand side by holding control and clicking group to lock them together. From there, you can shrink or enlarge your design to the appropriate size. Since I'm working with an extra small adult jersey, I will click on the lock to unlock the sizing dimensions and set my numbers width to 10 and set the height to 7.5. Since my name is a single layer, I will create a text box on the canvas and type it out using my desired font. I will set the color and unlink the lock. I will set the width to 8 and the height to 3. Once you are content with the grouping, click make it in the top right hand corner. I'll be sure to put these measurements in the description as well. The next screen will show you how each image will be cut and separates them by color. Each one on a different mat. At this point, you will need to remember to select mirror image for each individual cut, since this design will be applied face down. You will then select continue. At this point, you will want to plug your cutter into your computer. Once connected, you will be asked to select a base material. For this design, I'm using Easy Weed HTV, so I will select the Cricut equivalent, which is Everyday Iron-On. The system will then let you know that it is ready for the first mat or color. You will go ahead and place your vinyl sheet shiny side down onto the appropriately sized mat, making sure that you have enough material to cover the cut area. You will then feed the mat into the cutter and press the go button. Once the first cut is complete, Cricut Design Space will provide a check mark and proceed to the next mat. When ready, you will again load the mat, feed it into the cutter, and press the go button. If additional colors are used, the same process will continue for each one. After removing the last vinyl sheet from the mat, you will move on to the weeding process. When you're finished, each color will remain by itself sitting on top of the bottom layer of the vinyl. Our number and name are now ready to be pressed. We will be pressing our colors one after another to slowly bring the number and name together. I'll be pressing the name first before moving on to the number. I'll be pressing for 15 seconds at 305 degrees. Garment prep remains the same as previous projects. I'll lint roll the fabric, insert my pressing pillow, and press it for a few seconds to iron out the wrinkles. I will then center the name face down, cover it with my protective paper, and pull down on the press. When 15 seconds are up, I will pull up on the press, remove the protective paper, and remove the bottom layer of the vinyl at an angle. Since this is a hot peel, the base sheet will need to be removed while the vinyl is still warm. I will then move on to the number. The number will be handled a little differently. I'll insert my pillow, lay down the base color, cover it with protective paper, and press for 1 to 2 seconds. This is done to pin the base color to the jersey and ensure scorching won't occur when additional layers are added. I will then add my top layer over the base, cover it with protective paper, and press for the full 15 seconds. When the 15 seconds are up, I will again pull up on the press, remove the protective paper, and remove the bottom layer of the vinyl at an angle. You will hear some tearing when the pressed vinyl separates from the pressing pillow, but this is normal when the mesh is thin enough for the vinyl to reach the pillow your number will remain unharmed. I will then flip the jersey over and repeat these same steps for the number on the front. You are now ready for game day. more content to cover in my upcoming videos so please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already been notified when those videos do drop if you found this video helpful please hit the like button as always i am mike this is the short of it see you next time